welcome back to the channel. Also, if you are new, welcome. I hope you have a lot on your to-do list because this video is jam-packed full of cleaning motivation. Lots of deep cleaning going on. That is why I'm starting off in Freya's bedroom. This was the room on my to-do list to really deep clean. One of the dogs had an accident in this room. I don't know which one. Uh, but it just made it where I knew I wanted to wash this rug. So I was like, you know what? We're just going to do it all. We're just going to deep clean this room. It's been a good couple of months since I've given it a really good deep cleaning. Let me know how often do you deep clean your kids' bedrooms? I often <laughs> get like reminded and shamed into it when watching different videos online. And you see, I know you guys have seen it, either the pulling out your like sofa or pulling out your kid's bed and there's just like a bajillion toys underneath it. Um, so I do it fairly often, but I'm just always afraid of bugs. So that is my big reason for doing it a lot is I don't want any crumbs of food left over and bugs to come in. So just getting this all done. Luckily, Xander was around to help me. Bobby was working outside. Um, he's been working a lot outside, obviously, with the storms that came through and everything. There's just been a ton to get done. So I had Xander help me out just so I could get this rug out from under her bed. This is a washable rug. Usually, I do not throw it in the washing machine. Uh, normally, I would just take my uh, like carpet shampooer to it, but... This time, I wanted to get in and actually throw it into the washing machine. Also, I have no idea what was torn up in her room. It was probably from Minnie. Uh, that's the little dog you see right here, the little black and white dog. She loves tearing stuff up. We have to be like very careful with what gets left out because if you leave a napkin on the counter or not counter, but like where she can get at it or whatever, she just rips it to shreds. <laughs> She is a menace when it comes to that. And it was all over Freya's rug. So I wanted to shake it all off the rug and then just vacuum it all up. So you So one thing you got to keep in mind with any of these cleanings, especially lately, is I definitely do not get it all done at once. It's literally impossible. Um, it's funny because I used to get so much done in a day. You forget how hard it is with a newborn to get stuff done purely because you're constantly feeding a newborn. Um, you do deal with a lot of sleep time, but there's a lot of time where you're taking care of them so I always want to remind people just know I am not go go going uh, I go 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 and then usually have to go sit on the couch and feed a baby for well I feel like she's feeding for like an hour at a time which is insane so I am forced to take a step back and relax a little bit uh, in this uh, bucket. I just have some disinfectant from Melaleuca and that is what I'm washing the walls with, the floors with, everything. The walls I feel like are so important. It's really easy to forget to wash your walls but this is the easiest way to do it. I did have, um, when I took a quick break and had the rug out and everything, I sent in our robot vacuum which also mops. So the floors had like an initial mopping done on them with that. So I have no problem washing the walls and the floors all with the same mop head. Usually as long as I'm in one room, that doesn't bother me, unless I'm in the bathroom. I don't want to use the same mop head in the bathroom on the walls and the floor unless I do all the walls first and then the floors, then it doesn't bother me as much. Um, but yeah, going around and washing your walls if you haven't done it and you have a spin mop, I highly recommend it. It's so quick and easy. I feel like a lot of times it can be very intimidating, but it makes the biggest difference in your room. It makes the paint look nice, fresh. It makes the room smell amazing. It's crazy how much smells can linger on your walls. 
Um, and I think it's just, especially in our house, we have textured walls and everything. So dust and stuff collects on those walls. Even if you may not notice it, notice it, it definitely happens. And all of those things definitely collect odors. So this just makes it where the whole room feels so much better. Luckily, this bed is super light. Um, I got it off of Amazon. It was fairly cheap. I want to say it was only like $150, which I thought was a really good price for a trundle bed. We do not currently have a bottom mattress for it, but eventually we will get one because Athena, probably right around a year to 18 months, that's usually when all of my kids transferred from a crib to big kid beds. Um, she will be coming in here and sharing a room with Freya. I personally, and I know this, I know this is controversial because <laughs> people always tell me this with my boys that they should have their own room. Um, and actually Xander, if you remember, or if you're new here, Xander actually had his own room for a small amount of time. And then when we offered him to have his own room again, he actually said no. He, he preferred after having time of having his own room, sharing a room. But I also personally believe that kids do better when they share rooms, especially at a young age. Like I think about myself and I am 33 years old. And in my life, I have only had like one year of my life where I did not share a room, maybe two years, uh, because I shared a room with my younger sister for many, many years. And it wasn't until my older sister got married that we didn't share a room anymore. Um, and then shortly after that, Bobby got married and I'm sharing a room again. So I actually think it's very good for them. After that though, I moved on. So I got these RX soil kits. You guys know Bobby and I are obsessive when it comes to lawn care. Like we don't hire people, which is very common here in Florida. So this kit was really cool. They send you all the stuff you need and it's pretty much just a baggie for the soil sample don't mind the ducks behind me they were very curious hoping that i had mealworms uh, and trying to figure out what i was doing but rx soil makes sending your soil to a lab easy and convenient providing very fast testing with easy to read reports and friendly team to help you understand what it all means for your garden and your home Accuracy is something that really matters when we want to take a closer look at the soil around our homes. And advanced lab testing is not as challenging as you may think. RX Soil partners with certified labs to provide both plant nutrition testing and contaminant detection packages. Simple to choose the package with the right coverage for you. And RX Soil ships testing materials directly to your home with the right prepaid packaging to get the sample back to the lab. Reports are sent directly to your email when completed. And RX Soil staff is available by email, phone, text to walk you through any questions or concerns. Fall is the ideal time to test your soil and allows you to address garden or lawn soil issues during the dormant winter periods, whether it's correcting the soil pH in the off season or doing the first check for heavy metals in your garden. Fall results give AMP time to fix the problem before spring growing season. Head to rxsoil.com slash packages or I will have the link in my description box below and use my code for 10% off your soil testing at checkout. And also a huge thanks to RX Soil for sponsoring today's video. So if you have little ones, I would love to know what your kids are going for Halloween. The boys this year, once again, just wanted to be something scary. Um, so Xander is like a, just a pumpkin scarecrow looking guy. Um, 
he found something that had like a light up face and everything. And then Xander wanted to be uh, the, what is it? Scream, the white face looking guy. Uh, so he got that. And then Freya, she's not 100% sure. She has a witch costume, but then she also has Elsa from Frozen. So we'll, we'll probably decide that day. Plus she has all of her other princess dresses. But what are your kids going for? Are they, or do you guys do family costumes? We've never done family costumes. We've always let the kids decide. Uh, but I always see the family costumes like the Wizard of Oz or all the different ones out there. And I always think it's so cute. But we personally always thought it was more fun to let the kids decide what they wanted to use. I needed to quickly refill, though, my Tough and Tender cleaner, which I just ran out of, which I'm sad. So I'm going to be placing another order for that. Luckily, I always go between that and Pine Sol. So even though that's gone, I still have Thieves Cleaner and Pine Sol that I can replace it with. So not out for everything. I always like to have backups, especially on my multi-purpose cleaners, because I use it all the time. Also, if you guys, like, ever are wondering about keeping your backsplash clean, I recommend cleaning it on a regular basis. When I used to help people clean their houses, the backsplash used to be the dirtiest part in the kitchen when I was cleaning. And I have noticed that by just every once in a while doing a quick wipe down, it makes the biggest difference because the kitchen collects so much grease when you're cooking and everything that cabinets and backsplash get so dirty. So if you just get in the habit of giving everything just a gentle wipe down, I promise it'll make your life so much easier. So seeing Little Miss Athena here got me thinking. So we recently got a comment about someone concerned about our dogs with Athena um, and made the comment of how we should get rid of the dogs while Athena's around because she's so little. Um, I was very shocked by that comment. Now, I do know that dogs are unpredictable. Animals in general, they are animals like they're unpredictable. Um, but when I read that comment, I was very surprised because Bobby and I are very cautious, um, when it obviously comes to the kids. So one thing I will say, if you are ever concerned about animals in your house or someone else's house, as long as you just follow the rule of you don't leave your kids alone with animals. Um, and that even goes for Freya, like she is young enough and it's not so much that I'm concerned with our animals as much as I am concerned with our children because let's be honest kids often don't know how to one read the signals of animals and um, they're like little signs they give when they're getting annoyed but two I just think it is a good rule of thumb that you should always keep an eye on your kids around the animals so if you left that comment, I promise you that dogs are not a concern to us when it comes to Athena, partially because she's never left alone with the dogs. Like, we always have an eye on her, and it's very much not a concern when she is a baby baby, but definitely when she gets to, like, crawling and walking and things like that, we are way, way more vigilant. As you can see, though, this rug was in desperate need of a cleaning. This rug gets really dirty really easy. This room is used all the time by the kids, animals, Bobby and I, like all of us. We are super active in this room. Like it's our main family room. So I always go through and give it a really good vacuuming. You can see here just how much gets like caught in this thing of dog hair. And we empty this every single time. So when it comes to dog fur, we are not lacking by any means. Um, but I decided on this day, which is why I moved like the sofa and everything around, that I wanted to roll up the rug and quickly clean underneath it as well. 
So this is my wet dry vacuum, my Eureka. Love my Eureka. I show you, talk about this thing all the time. It's one of my favorite cleaning tools. Just to be able to quickly vacuum and mop all at the same time makes such a difference in the world. Even when I know I'm gonna go back and mop, like today, I planned on actually like mop mopping but I love being able to go in with this and get that like initial layer of dirt off the floor and loosen everything up and then go in with a mop. Like it makes a big, big difference. Also, have you ever heard, now I've never done this because usually by the time I mop my entire house, I don't wanna re-mop it. Um, but often people say you should mop your house twice, get the initial dirt off and then mop it again to give it a more thorough deep cleaning. For me, this pretty much does that because I always vacuum before I mop anyway because you want to get all the crumbs and dirt and everything off the floor. So I feel like this is a great way to do that deep cleaning uh, without like vacuuming, then mopping, then mopping again. I can just vacuum and mop all at once and then bring out my mop and do the more deep cleaning on the floor. Doesn't matter where we go and destination or no. When I want it, then I want it, yeah, I want it, oh, I want it, let's go. Look around, where's the people at? I want a taste of the good life, hit me with it right now, in it. Cause when I want it, then I want it, yeah, I want it. So if you follow us on our family vlog channel, you already know this, but I just started my wellness journey. I'm going to call it a wellness journey because I'm trying not to focus on the weight as much as just feeling healthy and back to like normal. Um, so I've been going to the chiropractor. I just started doing that just the other week. Um, unfortunately, my back is way messed up and he wants me coming in three times a week for a month, which can get expensive. But I also know like when this chiropractor is really good, not only does he like do like a physical to check on you, but he also does x-rays. And literally in one of my x-rays of like my pelvic bone, one of them is like twisted. <laughs> like it's supposed to be straight and it's crooked. So we're just trying to get everything back in order and working correctly. Um, also started carnivore again, which you guys know I love doing carnivore. I always feel so good on carnivore. Um, so you're still gonna get recipes and stuff for me because obviously I'm still cooking and baking for the kids and everything. But personally, I'm trying to stay away from that stuff. I wanna do at least 30 days. I might push it though to 90. But right now I'm telling myself 30. And then after that, I'll be a little less strict on it. I will say on Sunday, I already did have a cheat meal just because that was family Sunday and I'm not gonna stress about it. That's why I really wanted to call this a wellness journey over like specifically weight loss because if I am at family dinner and like this past Sunday we had pasta and bread and salad, like nothing that is on carnivore at all, um, I'm not gonna stress out about it. Like I'm not gonna beat myself up for having something that's not on plan. I'm just gonna jump right back on it for the next meal. So that is what I have been doing. I already feel a lot better, a lot better. Um, so just slowly working on it. Athena has also been going to the chiropractor. I can't remember if I mentioned that or not. But so she uh, pretty much since the beginning has had some like tummy problems, which is pretty common in newborns and even more common in premature newborns just because their gastrointestinal intestine tract isn't fully matured um, and developed. So I started taking her, oh my goodness, like it has already worked so well. She used to scream like obvious like crying, screaming pain whenever she was gassy. So I did like all those massages and stuff like that. And that really helps, but it definitely makes a big difference going to chiropractor. And I wasn't sure. I've never taken any of my kids to a chiropractor as newborns. And it almost doesn't seem like they're doing much, but at the same time, what all are you going to do on a itty bitty little baby? But I can 100% say it has made a huge, massive difference in the way she's acting and just 
her not being so upset and everything. So I have been really, really happy with that. So if you have little ones, uh, not even just newborn, just littles, and they're having any issues and you weren't sure about the chiropractor, I 100% would go. Our chiropractor for kids, it's only $30 a visit. Um, if you, Some people have insurance that cover chiropractors. Us, so our insurance covers it, but it's actually cheaper to take the cash option. I don't understand it, but it is. So we just pay cash instead of going through our insurance. Um, and it's only $30 a visit. And they've already told me, realistically, babies only normally need like two or three adjustments just because they don't have like years and years of stress on their body but especially right after birth if it's c-section or vaginal or whatever it's like such a traumatic experience on their little bodies that makes a huge difference and like i said for her who's obviously been dealing with some tummy gas problems it's helped so much she's still gassy don't get me wrong girl can fart like none other but She's not screaming in pain, which just makes me feel a lot better because it hurts your little mama heart when your baby's screaming like that. And you can tell, like, you know that your baby's cries. You know the difference between, like, just, like, tired or hungry or actual pain. And I could tell she was in pain. Um, but now that Freya's rug was all done, I wanted to put it back under. This is why I don't wash it on a regular basis. This process right here of getting it back laid out is not easy. I needed Bobby to come in and help because we had to like adjust the bed around, but especially with her bed being a trundle bed, it makes it a little bit more difficult. But like I said, it was in desperate need of needing to be cleaned. So totally fine with doing this, especially since I only do it every couple of months. It does not get done like on a weekly or a monthly basis. So not a huge deal here. But I knew I wanted to get her room, like, when I was able to get her room back together, I wanted to get back together right away. Because my little girl is the type of girl that when she needs her alone time, she's actually very much like me. I was the same way when I was a little kid. Um, I'm the same way now, let's be honest, as an adult. There's just times you need your own personal space and quiet time. And she is just like that. Like, she is out playing with us and doing all the things. But then she would just go in her room, shut her door, lay on her bed, or play with her stuffies, and just have that, like, quiet, alone time. Um, so I like to make sure it's all clean and put together for her so she can do that. Because like I said, I was the same way. Like, I totally get it. I used to, I was always really into crafting. Um, and actually, so much so that I actually had a small, like, kitchen table in my bedroom growing up because that way I could lay out um, I liked making jewelry and stuff so I would lay out my stuff to make jewelry and I also really enjoyed painting and drawing so it gave me all the room to do all my crafty little things um, so I totally get the like just wanting to go be by myself have some quiet time and relax It always feels so good to put all the rooms back together because I obviously left this kind of torn apart for a little bit to let the rug like dry dry. Now, one thing I do do when I'm shampooing is I will go over it like one time with like the soap and scrub and stuff like that. But when you saw me go over it like more, it was not putting any more like soap or water down or anything. It was purely suction. Uh, and I also have that way sped up. So I do it very, very slow. I've learned that that makes the biggest difference to just really make sure it dries as quickly as possible. Um, because yeah, no one wants to have the damp rug and before I put especially like this table on it where I know it's just going to completely not absorb the moisture but like hold it in it doesn't have that like 
air circulation moving around. Um, I wanted to make sure it's as dry as possible. This little table though, so this is the corner that I sit in. Let me know if you're like us. I'm sure most people are like in your family room, you have your seat, your husband has their seat, all those things. So that's my seat. Um, so needless to say, throughout the day, oh, I'm glad I got this shot for you. Totally like changing topics here real quick. I will go back to it. Uh, I needed to clean these windows because that was filthy. Um, and that was all from the hurricane, just like knocking up so much dust and everything on the outside of the window. Because I did these not too, too long ago. And usually it lasts a good couple of months, but after the hurricane, these were just filthy. So I desperately wanted to get outside and take care of it. Um, but back to that table. So since that is where I sit, it collects a lot of stuff. <laughs> when I am sitting there multiple times a day for a good hour, 30 minutes, whatever, um, with the baby, it just always ends up collecting an abundance of things. So I try and clean that table off about two to three times a day, which I know sounds crazy, but it just collects so quickly that I do try and clean it off two to three times a day, but between like, I'll just leave diapers out or wipes out or drink because y'all know if you've ever breastfed, like the people talk about hunger. I don't deal with a ton of hunger when breastfeeding, but thirst, I thirst so much that that is definitely my thing is I always end up with so many things uh when it comes to that oh I will say with me doing carnivore I wasn't going to do soda and I was going to cut it out I am now slowly cutting out coffee and soda because the first day I started carnivore oh my goodness I had the worst headache in the world and by the end of the day, I'm like, I can't, I can't go no caffeine because I'm so used to caffeine and my head was not having it at all. So yes, coffee and diet Pepsi is definitely not on the car, at least not the super strict version of it. But for me, I am definitely keeping it in and cutting it down slowly because I wanted to chop my head off. Like it was throbbing that night. See, I just keep on staring at my phone. Spinning hearts racing Knowing that you could give me a call I lay awake at night Because all I seem to think about is you And then into the boys room So the boys room I wanted to obviously wash their bedding I like to go in here at least once a week Sometimes it's twice a week It really just depends on the week And the kids um, their activity level because some weeks they be stinking more weeks more than other weeks uh, so but at least once a week going in stripping their bed this spray bottle is just filled with those scent booster beads I just um, whenever it's empty will take really hot water and a scoop of my scent booster beads and dissolve them in here and it works so good just giving a fresh scent to your linens uh without that like sometimes the room fresheners are like super strong this is a more subtle and i really really like it but my big thing in here is i was telling bobby i'm like the cords are just getting out of control in here um because they have so much here they have their computers they have their tablets um, there's just cords everywhere and even like our main internet source is in their bedroom uh, because it was they were just connected to a wall that the internet guy th thought would be easiest and I didn't care because for me and for them they do so much gaming and they're always complaining about the leg if you got kids you understand the leg the leg it's lagging so I'm like sure put it in there that way we can even with um, Xander's computer, we could just hardwire it into the internet. Just make life so much easier. But the wires are driving me absolutely crazy. And the internet guy left a ton of extra cordage. And I was getting nervous that the robot vacuum, because I send the robot vacuum in the kids' rooms um, every couple of days just so it gets under the beds and everything. Um, and I didn't want it to get entangled into the cords, end up ruining something. So I told Bobby, I'm like, I'm going to go in here, clean up their room, um, but also clean up like under their desk and around their desk so that he could then go in later and he 
didn't rewire it, but he, like, organized the wires better, and I don't know. I guess it's rewiring. So instead of having wires everywhere, he was able to condense it down, zip tie it so there weren't, like, cords just hanging around and just make it look nice again. So that was the whole plan. Get in here, strip the beds, get them all clean right away, and then go through this desk area, especially they had two bins in their desk. Um, and I don't remember the last time we've gone through these bins because we had school stuff from last school year. So it was very good for me to go through and just purge. I got rid of an entire garbage bag worth of stuff in these bins that you're going to see here in just a second, just going through and getting rid of practically just old school supplies and school notebooks and school workbooks from last year. I actually saw someone ask the other day in a video of what people do with kids school work um, and like things they get from school. So I figured I would answer that question here because I'm when I see one person ask a question, I often assume a lot of people have these questions. Now, I'm not saying you have to do it this way. I'm just telling you the way I do it that has always worked for us. When the kids come home with first, if you've never looked into Swedish death, death cleaning, highly recommend looking into it because I'm not saying you have to do it, but it completely changes your mindset. And basically Swedish death cleaning is to think, okay, is this something I would want from my parents? Um, or like, am I, is this something my family is going to want or is it just going to be a burden? So you don't hold on to things for sentimental value if you know you're not going to like it. Um, or someone else is just going to be burdened with your things if anything were to ever happen to you. Um, and I kind of take that in when it comes to the kids' school stuff. I know personally there may be some things that I'm like, oh, but it's so cute. But realistically, I put it in a bin and I'm never going to look at it again. And I don't want any of those bins from my parents. Like, I don't need kindergarten worksheets that I did or anything like that like I don't care I feel like as parents like we think our kids are going to care but really we have sentimental value to it and then we end up putting in a bin to never look at it again so what I have always done with the boys um Athena not Athena of course Athena's is still a little too young for it but Freya is too young also but when the boys come home with something from school uh they always, it never fails. Where do you want me to put this? I'm like, well, you can put it wherever you want. Just make sure you find a home for it. Don't just leave it laying around or anything. Um, and you make the decision. Usually they are like, I don't really care about this. And they end up tossing it. And they're I'm like, that's fine. You want to toss it, you can toss it. But I let the boys make their own decisions when it comes to that stuff. But I also put the responsibility of finding a safe home for it up to them so like Bjorn could care less about items like he's like I don't care I throw it out don't care Xander's a little bit more sentimental so he actually allocated a bin under his bed it's one of those fabric bins where it has different things that he holds on to so if he gets any like awards from school or when he was doing jujitsu or just like random stuff that he wants to hold on to he has that bin and that's allocated for that um also when it comes to like arts and crafts stuff bjorn i don't keeps almost none of the stuff he makes from school xander keeps almost all of it and i just always tell him yep find a spot for it or find a spot find a home all those things but i have found putting it in their hands makes them think about it uh, and I also takes the stress off of you as a parent of making the decision of, okay, does my kid find a lot of um, sentimental value to this? Because we may think it is because realistically we have a higher tie to it because they're our babies 
than they actually do. So that is how I handle it. Um, and my kids are really good at not holding on to things because I've started them at a really young age of decluttering. And it's always come to like if the kids' rooms get out of control and they can't maintain keeping their rooms clean because I 100% believe that most kids and probably even my kids, even with all what we do, have way more stuff than they even need. So whenever things get a little bit too crazy for them to be able to manage it on their own, um, I've always sat down and had a conversation with them and be like, hey, it seems like the room's getting a little bit crazy. Let's go through your stuff and get rid of stuff you're not playing with anymore to make it easier to keep your room clean. Um, and we've done that since little, little. So once they hit Bjorn and Xander's age, like I can go into their room and we can knock out a quick declutter in 10 to 20 minutes. Sometimes it's a little bit longer if you're going through clothes and you're like, okay, try this on. Does it fit? Doesn't it fit? But like if we're just going through toys, it takes max 20 minutes to go through everything. Uh, and that's also why I knew I could go through these bins. A lot of these school supplies I knew I did not need to ask them about. It's usually things like video games or toys or anything like that that I will not do myself. I always make sure that they are participating in the decluttering. And this is actually a lot later in the day than I usually like to get our room cleaned. Usually our room is one of the things I like to get done right away. But knowing that the boys were at school and I wanted to get their room cleaned and I wanted to let Bobby get in there and deal with the wires, that was the first thing I did on this day other than actually the windows. I did the windows because I was sitting down feeding Athena and I was looking out the windows and in the morning the sun comes in and you guys know when the sun comes through the windows at like the perfect angle and you see all the dirt, well, it was driving me absolutely bonkers. So literally I, when she was done eating, I got up and did that. It was probably like, I don't know, 8.30 in the morning. <laughs> um, but then moving on into the boys' room, because like I said, I wanted to get that done before the boys got home from school. Uh, and that way Bobby could then get his stuff done. But I always like to come in our room and clean it and make the bed. It just always feels so much better. It wasn't too, too late because if I make my bed, like, let's say after 4 o'clock in the afternoon, I don't put all the pretty pillows on it. And I usually do, like, a turndown service on our bed because I know eventually or soon enough we'll be going to bed, especially because with Athena... I always do her last feeding and everything in our room as just like a, all right, this is our routine to start settling her down for the night. Um, so it actually has me going to bed sooner because I'm like, well, I'm already in here. I spent like an hour doing her like bedtime routine of I give her her like massage to help with her tummy, um, feed her all the things. I've also been giving her more of a head massage. I've just noticed she's starting to get some dry uh, skin on our head and Xander when he was little got the worst cradle cap in the world it was so bad all my kids have been born with lush beautiful hair when they're born and I love that and he did also but his cradle cap was so bad the boy went bald uh, on the top of his head he looked like an old man with that whole giant bald spot on his head uh, so ever since him I've learned how to deal with cradle cap and the second I see it I get to work because I was so sad when he lost all of his beautiful hair um, and Athena's starting to get that so we're making sure to do our nightly massages she's been getting breast milk like mask on her head and then I'm washing it a little bit later if you've never tried doing breast milk on your baby's head now you want to put it on, let it sit like a normal mask. So if you're doing a mask on your hair, it's like, what, 10, 20 minutes, whatever. But then you wash it out. You don't leave it in. Otherwise, it's going to be crusty and gross. But it works miracles for cradle cap. Works so, so good. Um, along with, like, Vaseline. I don't like using coconut oil. 
I noticed with Xander, it didn't really work. It seemed to almost make it worse, like it was clogging those pores even more. So, But I've heard b great things. So I guess whatever works for you, figuring that out. But breast milk, it literally is liquid gold. Breast milk works on so many different things. Skin care, hair care, eye infections, ear infections, all the things. Just, throw, just squirt some breast milk on it and you're good. <laughs> but yeah, so... Getting the room clean, getting the bathroom obviously tidied up, just making sure to wipe everything down um, and just get everything back to being peaceful, relaxful. That way when I go to bed, I can comfortably relax for the evening as well. Well, I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, share this video on your favorite social media network. That always really helps out my channel. Also, if you guys made it to the end, drop me something Christmassy in the comments down below to let me know you made it this far, but I'll see you next time. Bye.